Today on Garage Guru TV, I'll give you the lowdown on XXR wheels and how to choose wheels and tires for your project vehicle. Hey, this is DJ Martin and welcome to Garage Guru TV. On this episode, we're going to be featuring products from XXR Wheels. If you've ever seen one of our episodes with our Datsun 510 SCCA project vehicle, you've probably noticed a set of silver or gold XXR wheels on that vehicle. When the guys over at XXR saw that we used their wheels on our vehicles, they decided to send us out a set of 567 wheels that they debuted at SEMA. So let me give you a lowdown on XXR wheels and why they're the right choice for your vehicle. For nearly 40 years, XXR has designed and manufactured aluminum alloy wheels for car manufacturers and numerous aftermarket wheel companies. XXR Wheels was created to fill a void in the aftermarket wheel industry that nobody addressed. That void was a high quality wheel for the grassroots car enthusiast. XXR's style, fitment, and designs reflect their passion and allows us car enthusiasts to truly enjoy our rides. With over 20 different styles of wheels in hundreds of different combinations of diameter, width, and offset, you can be sure that XXR makes a quality wheel for your ride. Our Datsun 510 sports the XXR 530 wheel in gold. The wheel measures 15 by 8 and a quarter inches with zero offset and a 4 on 114.3 bolt pattern. This being our track setup, we wrapped the XXRs in a set of Toyo Proxy's R888R 225 5015. Our Focus SEL will receive the XXR 567 wheel in phantom black. The wheel measures 18 by 8.5 inches with a positive 35 offset and a 5 on 108 bolt pattern. This setup will see daily driver use, so we wrapped it in a set of Falcon Pro G5 Sport all season tires in a 235 40 18. When installing new wheels on your vehicle, it may be necessary to order tuner style lugs with a different seat. This Gorilla Wheel installation kit includes new splined tuner lugs and the lug key. Trust me, I get it. If you see a great set of wheels and tires on a website, you're going to want to hit the add to cart and the ship to me button. But there are a lot of things you have to keep in mind so that you have the proper fitment on your vehicle so that you're riding down the road safely. Let me give you a walkthrough of some of the aspects that you have to look for in both wheels and tires when ordering them for your vehicle. When choosing a set of wheels for your vehicle, there are a few parameters you need to keep in mind in order to achieve a nice fitment. These parameters include diameter, width, offset, and bolt pattern. This beautifully drawn diagram will aid in the explanation of some of these parameters. Perhaps the most difficult parameter to comprehend is offset. Wheel offset is the difference in distance between the center line of the wheel's width and the mounting surface where the wheel bolts against the hub or brake drum or brake rotor. Wheel offset, which is the number that follows the wheel width, is expressed in millimeters from the center line, which can cause some confusion considering that the overall wheel width is measured in inches. Wheel offset can be a negative number, positive number, or in some cases, zero offset, which means the mounting surface is in the dead center of the wheel. Most wheels you'll purchase nowadays will have a positive offset. Positive offset means that the mounting surface is closer to the outside of the wheel than the center of the wheel. A more positive offset will push the lip of your wheel more inboard under the fender and behind it. If you purchase a wheel with a more negative or even negative offset, the lip of the rim will sit proud of the fender. If you are looking for a flush or poke style fitment, you will want to look for a wheel with a more negative offset than your factory wheels or in extreme cases, a negative offset wheel if you are running flares, over fenders, or a wide body kit. A more positive offset wheel can lead to a couple issues. Firstly, you can't run as wide of a wheel. Secondly, given that the width of the new wheel is the same as the old wheel, a more positive offset wheel can have clearance issues with brake calipers, struts, shocks, and sometimes even frames. The next parameter to look at is the bolt pattern. The bolt pattern is the number of and the width between the lug holes drilled into the wheel. The typical wheel will have four, five, six, or eight lug holes drilled in. On cars and light trucks, you will usually see four, five, and six bolt patterns. Eight lug patterns are used by three quarter and one ton trucks. 
On a four lug pattern, the width between the holes is measured from the center of one corner hole to the center of the opposite corner hole. This diameter can be expressed in either millimeters or inches. Here is a list of the typical bolt patterns you will see. The first number represents the amount of lug holes drilled. The second number, which can be in inches or millimeters, is the measured width of the pattern. Therefore, a 4 on 100 bolt pattern will have 4 holes and the difference represented by the arrow will be 100 millimeters. Here is an example of a larger 4 bolt pattern, such as this 4 on 114.3 millimeters or 4.5 inches. Once again, these numbers can be in either millimeters or inches. This is a larger 4 bolt pattern as represented by the arrow. Here we have a poorly drawn 5 bolt pattern. When measuring for a 5 lug pattern, you once again measure center of drilled hole to center of drilled hole, but you skip one hole to measure center to center. The importance of tire fitment is as important if not more than wheel fitment since tires are your only connection to the road. Tires are covered in letters, numbers, and symbols that can look confusing at first glance so let me walk you through the markings. The first letter indicates the type of vehicle the tire is rated for. In this case, the P means this is a passenger tire. The other common rating seen here is ST for trailer tires. Sometimes you will find an LT after all of the numbers and letters that indicated that this is a light truck tire. You will now come to a three digit number. This number is the measurement in millimeters of the width of the tire. The Falcon tires going on our focus are 235 millimeters wide. The next number you will come across is the aspect ratio. This number can range anywhere from 25 up to 80. This number is a percentage of the overall width of the tire as mentioned before. And that percentage is the sidewall height. In our case, the sidewall of this tire is 40% of the 235 millimeter width of the tire. When you calculate 40% of 235 millimeters, you reach that the sidewall will be 94 millimeters tall. This letter R that follows the aspect ratio indicates the construction of this tire. The R stands for radial. Almost all tires you will purchase nowadays will be radial construction, and very few tires still use the old bias ply construction style. Only certain white walls, race tires, and tall skinny tires used on street rods are bias ply. The next number we come across is the diameter of the wheel that fits this tire. This number can range anywhere from 13 inches to 28 inches and directly correlates with the size of your wheels. The next number is tread wear. Tread wear is a measurement of the softness of the tire compound in simple terms. The higher the tread wear number, the longer the tire will last and vice versa. A very racy, sticky tire will have a tread wear of anywhere from 50 to 200, while a more streetable tire can have anywhere between 300 and 500. The Falcon Pro G5 Sport AS that we are using on our Focus has a 500 tread wear, while a Toyo Proxy R888R like the one on our Datsun has a 100 tread wear. The next parameter is the load rating. The load rating indicates the amount of weight the tires can handle at each individual corner. There are numerous charts available online that can aid you in selecting the correct load rating for your vehicle. The last parameter to know regarding tires is speed rating. This Y represents that this tire has been manufactured to be run safely up to 186 miles per hour. Both the specifications for load and speed rating can be found in your vehicle's door jam or owner's manual. But when in doubt, err to the side of caution when choosing these parameters. Welcome back. I know that was a lot of tech, but you need to know all these different numbers and parameters in order to get the right wheel and tire for your vehicle. After all that math and calculating and research, we found that an 18 on 8.5 wheel with a 35 offset with a 5 on 108 bolt pattern will fit perfectly on our Focus with a 235 40 18 tire. All that math and calculating can be difficult and rack your brain, but the actual installation of new wheels and tires is extremely easy. Let me walk you through it. Prior to jacking your vehicle up, break loose your lug nuts, and then once in the air, remove the lug nuts, wheels, and in our case, wheel spacers. When we first received our set of XXR567 wheels, we tested them for fitment on our Ford Focus without the tire mounted. We checked for things like brake caliper clearance, strut clearance, fender clearance, and things of that nature so that we don't have any issues. Even once you get the tire on, you're going to want to check all those things again because it's good to check twice so that you don't have any issues while going down the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount it up. 
I'm going to start one lug nut at the top so that we can accurate, so it's seated up against the face so we can tell if there's any issues. So I'm just going to check behind each of the spokes. There's a lot of room here for the caliper. Doesn't feel like we're going to hit any of the strut area or any of that or the shock at all. And fender clearance, we're looking perfect. Let's mount these guys up. Once you have checked for clearance on all four corners, go ahead and mount your wheels up for good. Screw on your new lug nuts with the supplied lug key by hand to avoid stripping the threads. Once snug, tighten the nuts evenly in a star pattern to ensure the wheel is seated flush against the hub with a ratchet. Don't bother torquing your wheels in the air, they will just spin. But once on the ground, torque the lugs to the factory specification, in our case, 90 foot-pounds. So here we have the factory wheel and the brand new XXR wheel. The factory wheel is a 17 by 7 inch and the brand new XXR wheel is an 18 on 8 and a half. This allows us to run a much wider tire, a 235 as opposed to the factory 215. It'll look a lot meatier on the vehicle and with this increased contact patch we'll have better grip, performance, and it'll just look a whole heck of a lot better. Some people might be wondering why the original tire looks a little bit taller than this one. Well, we ran a 235-40-18, whereas the factory tire is a 215-50. The 40 and the 50 indicate how tall the sidewall is, and with the lower number, we have a smaller sidewall, which makes the tire a tad bit smaller. But that'll just lower the car a little bit more and make it look a lot better. With our new XXR567 wheels and Falcon tires on our 2018 Ford Focus SEL, it handles amazing and it just looks great. I get comments on it at gas stations and places and car shows wherever I go. If you want to see what XXR has for your vehicle, check out XXRwheels.com. Thank you for tuning in to Garage Guru TV. I'll see you next time.